Good afternoon, Miss Lewis. Good afternoon, Matron. Do sit down. You've come a long way today. Yes. And did you find the hospital quite easily? Yes, thank you, Matron. Right from the start, the interview was quite different from what I'd expected. All my careful rehearsing was quite useless. So I just relaxed, which was obviously what Matron wanted anyway. She did ask about my O-level passes, of course, and looked at my certificates. You left school two years ago. What have you been doing since then? I've been working in a library as an assistant. And uh, why did you leave school at 16? Did you really want to, or were you anxious to do something else? Yes, I, I thought I wanted to gain experience outside school until I could start my training as a nurse. Yes, well, that seems sensible enough. Do you like reading? Very much. We talked about my other hobbies, too. And then Matron asked me if I had any questions. I asked her if we could get to church easily. Oh, really? Concerning attending church services. And now, Miss Lewis, suppose you tell me why you want to be a nurse. Well, I've always wanted to, but I'm not really sure why. I knew this question would come up, and I still wasn't ready for it. It seems so silly to talk about ideals and things. Well, have you thought about it in terms of service to people? Yes, but, but there's no need to be embarrassed about it. Nursing is a service, and the main reward is in the trust people give to you for what you give to them. I'm sure you know that. Yes, Matron, I did. Good. And now I, I was jolly glad she'd realized what I'd wanted to say. Anyway, the worst of it was over, and the interview hadn't been such an ordeal after all. I had to go and see Principal Tutor, and Matron promised to let me know as soon as possible whether they'd have me. I was lucky. A week later, I heard they had a vacancy in their next preliminary training school. I was a bit alarmed at leaving home for the first time and entering a new world. Thank goodness the warden met me when I arrived at the nurse's home. A lot of the girls had their parents with them, and I wished and wished that Mother could have been there. Still, they told me there was a telegram. It was from the family wishing me luck. That made me feel a lot better. Warden took us up to our separate rooms, but we had to hurry. Tea at 4.30 in the common room with the tutors. The principal tutor was waiting to greet us. They certainly make sure you don't stay lost for long. Sister promised to introduce me to some of the other students as soon as I'd got a cup of tea. Some of the parents had to leave because of trains and things. Sister introduced me to their daughter. Mary Lewis, meet Anne Finley. Actually, we'd already met on the day of the interview with Matron. It's usually difficult for me to get to know people quickly. But Anne and I hit it right off from the start. She told me that she'd left school only last July, and in fact had gone to her interview with Matron still wearing her school uniform. She said it felt jolly odd being called Miss Finley, but rather nice. Anne's parents hadn't really wanted her to take up nursing, but after an interview with Matron and looking around the nurse's home, they felt happier about it, or at least resigned to letting Anne try it for a while. Anne said she'd come back when her parents had gone. Meanwhile, I wanted to look at a rather formidable chart on the wall. It actually showed the whole of our three years program here, 
including holidays. This was Doreen Morgan, another new girl. We agreed that the third year was too far off to get steamed up about. Doreen looked awfully grown up and admitted that she was 23. I didn't know you could start training as old as that, but apparently you can quite easily. It must seem like going back to school after spending five years in an office, but Doreen was very excited about being here. Are you getting on all right? Yes, thank you. Perhaps you'd like to go upstairs now and start unpacking. Thank you very much. <laughs> We began our new working life by learning something quite unacademic. How to fold and put on our nurses' caps. It certainly helps to remove any last traces of nerves. And then we settled down to learning basic subjects. Anne had done quite a bit of science at school, so she was already familiar with microscopes, bacteria and culture plates. But lots of the girls were like me and had to start from scratch. We were introduced to someone we'd get to know terribly well. <laughs> Good old Charlie. We learnt how the body moves and we learnt how to use our own bodies properly. This was an exercise to teach us how to lift heavy people without strain. Back, both arms swing and lift, back and forward. This was one of the things we really enjoyed doing. And so was the practical nursing routine we learned in the mocked up ward. For things like bed making and bandaging, we used each other as patients but we couldn't practice giving injections to each other. So we had another kind of patient with a particularly tough skin. A patient that couldn't protest when we did it wrongly. We learned all the routine things in nursing. But although we'd been there for four weeks, we still hadn't seen a real patient. How can one feel tenderly towards a wretched stuffed dummy? Three days later, we visited a ward for the first time. I suppose I'll see thousands of patients before the three years are up. But I shall always remember the first patient. These were the people we had become nurses to help. First, there was so little we could do for them. But we learnt. Every week we learnt more and more. We began to feel like nurses, even look like nurses. We were still new girls and the patients knew it. But most of them were nice and in their own ways tried to make life easy for us. There were exceptions, of course, but the least we could do was to listen to their complaints and worries. We weren't angels by any means, and occasionally we really got fed up. It seemed so dreary at times, and yet at other times it seemed to be the glamorous job people think it is. We were never left feeling either way for long. My special interest was the baby ward and I loved doing what little I could do to help them. Children need a very special kind of patience, and Anne had it. What a variety of patients we had. You really can see a true cross-section of society in a hospital. The old, the young, the rich, the poor, the kind, the malicious, the very ill, and the not so ill. You could make up a Tinker Tailor jingle about it. We worked and we played. Some played hard like Anne. Doreen and I would give her a game, but really prefer something less strenuous, like this.
Whatever it is, we value our free time. We love our work, but these moments of leisure are very precious too. The year was coming to an end, my first Christmas away from home. I thought at first it would be unbearable, but I soon realized that I wasn't the only one feeling like this. There's something rather special about bringing the happiness of Christmas to those who are separated from their families. Christmas or no Christmas, the ordinary routine of the hospital must go on night and day. I reported to the staff nurse, quietly, quietly. Doreen had finished her midnight supper and I went to have mine. It's a very special feeling, night duty. The hospital is silent, sleeping. The corridors are deserted, except for occasional night worker like oneself. We greet each other like old friends. One feels deeply responsible and even a little superior to everyone else. And then suddenly the exams were on top of us. Now, please, and let me have your papers. It was all over for the moment. Our second year was heralded by a change of colour in our belts and the happy thought of no more state exams for two whole years. We started to work on a more advanced syllabus. We learnt about the hospital's links with local health and welfare authorities and their services and discussed actual case histories. Yes, sister. Mrs. Parsons is 32 and she's expecting her sixth baby. First of all, we suggest that the antenatal clinic should contact... We suggested how we'd cope with the patient's welfare problems and then we were told by the almoner what in fact had been done. In fact, that is just about what did happen. Um, Mrs. Parsons did have to go into hospital and These brain teasers were fun, and a change from demonstrations and lectures. The second method of artificial ventilation involves the use of a bellows. We have one of these in every ward close to the patient. These bellows work on the principle that the air is drawn in through a valve at the top of the bellows, when the bellows are expanded. And this air Distinguished consultants and doctors came to lecture us. ...have a valve like this in the circuit, Otherwise, you would blow the patient's lungs up just like a balloon, and you would gradually expand the patient more and more. The patients and their illnesses became more and more part of our lives. We knew them inside out. And then there were the operations. Whenever I entered the theatre now, I always remembered the first time I watched an operation. It was my first year, and I really was scared at the thought of it. But there'd be nothing to worry about. And even then I'd been fascinated by the perfect teamwork of those around the table and the skill of the surgeon. It's 
Mr. Hopkins, he's gasping for breath. What is pulse and respiration? I can't feel a pulse. Very well then, nurse. Ring emergency and fetch the resuscitation trolley. Mr. Hopkins is one of our seriously ill patients. No pulse. Pupils dilated. Now think clearly, Mary Lewis, and fast. Looks like cardiac arrest. First, get respiration started. Get him breathing. Secondly, get air into him. Most important, don't let up now or his heart might stop again. For good this time. Finally, hand over thankfully to the doctor. Five minutes ago, I suddenly realized how far I'd gone since I'd first arrived. Then everything seemed so much bigger than life. The ward seemed enormous. The sisters and doctors seemed to have so much knowledge and confidence. The patients seemed so fragile. Three years later, I can look back with a wonderful sense of achievement. For I've changed more than my belt. I've changed myself. I feel I'm a responsible and valued member of the nursing profession. Now I realize how worthwhile all the effort has been. The big dance of the year. And we relax. Even though our final exams are only two weeks away. Earlier today, principal tutor spoke to us about our futures. And as I danced, I thought over what she'd said. There is such an enormous field from which you can choose once you are qualified as state registered nurses. Some of you, I know, are hoping to specialize in psychiatric nursing and in midwifery. Others will prefer nursing in the local authority services. Then there is nursing in the forces, overseas, in industry and elsewhere. But many will want to stay on the staff of a general hospital. Even if you decide to give up nursing after marriage, your training will not have been wasted and you'll always be welcomed back. Whichever branch of nursing you choose, good luck in your examinations and my sincere good wishes for the future. Girls in search of a career. I wonder how many of them will decide to become nurses. I wish I could tell them that this isn't just another job but a whole new world with a fascination all its own. <laughs>